right here. Yeah. <laughs> a celebration of success. For Moquisha Ingram, each step toward the stage is even sweeter. It feels amazing being a first time graduate in my immediate family. Ingram earned a Bachelor of Science in Biology from Livingstone College in Salisbury, North Carolina. After graduating, um, I plan on taking some nursing classes um, and working my way up in the system to become that pediatric neurologist. Livingstone is one of more than 100 historically black colleges and universities across the country. The majority of HBCUs are in the South, but they range as far north as Pennsylvania and also in the Virgin Islands. In the late 1800s, it was illegal for black Americans to read and write. These institutions were the first to do it on a large scale. There was this period called segregation where African Americans were not allowed access into mainstream majority institutions, predominantly white institutions. So that's how these institutions were founded. HBCUs came to be in several ways. Some the federal government established, some white religious leaders or segregationists started, but Livingstone was a product of African American ministers. Members of the Amy Zion Church, descendants of freed slaves, gave birth to this audacious idea of starting a school. You think about that, we're founded in 1879, so that's shortly after um, the Emancipation Proclamation, it's shortly after Juneteenth. And they had a sneaky suspicion that education would be the true emancipator and not the document that President Lincoln signed. Before it was Livingstone, it was Zion Wesley Institute in Concord. The school was moved to Salisbury on a plot of land that was once a slave plantation, a common story for HBCU campuses. So the land that we walk on every day was land that was cultivated by our ancestors in that institution called slavery. Livingstone was the site of the first black collegiate football game. December 1892. On the school's front lawn. They didn't have a football, so they pooled their resources to buy the football. They didn't have uniforms. The uniforms were made by the industrial arts um, department on campus. They took the shoes, their dress shoes, and they drove iron nails or nails through the soles of their shoes so they would have cleats so they could play this game. But what it does is it speaks to the self-reliance and determination of HBCUs. Now a hundred year old tradition called the commemorative classic. The game location alternates between Salisbury and Charlotte based HBCU Johnson C. Smith University. It generates a lot of revenue. People come from far and wide to witness these two institutions still playing each other on the one hand. And so from a tourist perspective and a destination perspective, we bring in a lot of resources. We walk the grounds and it's just history, history, history. When visitors arrive to the campus, it's almost like walking around a museum. You'll find the mausoleum where Joseph Price, the university's first president, is buried. What a history, what a legacy. Another spot, the Horseshoe, the meeting place of the Divine Nine sororities and fraternities on campus. These buildings were owned and occupied by squirrels and pigeons. Another thing you'll notice, crumbling buildings like this tower, which was once the main power source on the land. A report by the Government Accountability Office found nationwide each HBCU is in need of at least $46 million in repairs on average. We have to make decisions. Do we use the resources that we have to try to make sure we can keep the classes going and keep up with the equipment and pay the light bills and things of that nature? Or do we try to figure out ways to upgrade the buildings? And so. You know, it's, it's, it's a hard choice to make. Once the only option for black students is now the first choice for many graduates. <laughs> Livingstone College President Dr. Jimmy Jenkins says resources remain scarce across many HBCUs. Data from the American Council of Education says over a 12 year period, public and private HBCUs experienced the steepest declines in federal funding per full time student. We are performing way above our means. But, but we could think of what we could do if we had the resources to be able to, in fact, uh, take up the burden and, and provide 
the extra resources for extra work and extra support. Congress recognizes the underfunding of HBCUs. Lawmakers introduced the Ignite HBCU Excellence Act in May of 2021 to provide financial resources for long-term improvements. What we've found over the past few years is that the more we focus on HBCUs, the more likely we are to see success throughout our country in every corridor. And so what Ignite does is it gives us another opportunity to focus on funding our HBCUs. Senator Tim Scott from South Carolina co-sponsors the bill. He's hoping for a vote in early 2022. The future is really bright for our nation because we are putting more emphasis on our historically black colleges and universities. <laughs> HBCUs graduate some of the nation's top doctors, lawyers, engineers, and more. <laughs> Students like Ingram lead with more than just a degree. It's a blessing that they can, you know, provide education for their students and still be here after so many years. So it's just a blessing to graduate from a historical place. In Charlotte, Casey Jones reporting.